the dune buggy. A vehicle that often started life as a German economy box, but transformed into an American icon. Join me today for a discussion about these wonderful vehicles. There's facts and opinions ahead, but I'll do my best to keep it on the factual side. <laughs> as always, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe to the Auto Chatter channel. It means a lot. Now, I've always had an odd fascination with old VW Beetles, and they were not fast or seen as sporty. Maybe it was watching Herbie movies as a kid or speed buggy reruns. My parents had a Beetle when I was young, so maybe that was part of it too. They were originally developed by a guy named Ferdinand Porsche in the 1930s in Germany. Yeah, same guy whose name is on these. The Beetle, or Type 1 as it was officially called, had a dark past as the Lord Voldemort of the 20th century commissioned the design. Can I say his name on YouTube? Thin mustache ruler of Germany during World War II? Yeah, uh, well, the people's cars it was referred to was sold as an answer to all the German citizens' problems transportation-wise. Cheap to fix, cheap to build, rugged, good on fuel. The engine was in the back and it was rear-wheel drive. The benefit of that off-road was that the weight of the engine was over the drive wheels and the suspension setup allowed for pretty good ground clearance which is important if you're not on the best of roads or any roads for that matter. The government in Germany had some kind of deal at the time where citizens could make payments on one towards eventual ownership. Then World War II started and no one got a car. The Germans ramped up their war production and a vehicle based off Beetle architecture was their first version of a Jeep. Uh, and as you can see here, after the war, VW was shopped around to potentially interested parties to get their factory going again, including Henry Ford. Ford saw the humble Beetle and wanted nothing to do with it. Probably proved to be a mistake later as Beetles eventually passed up Model T sales as they made over 21 million of them. Anyway, they eventually started building and selling them all over, including the U.S., by the 1950s. Sales were slower to start, but eventually they were everywhere. They were cheap enough new that people got them instead of used cars. Many homes just had one car in the 50s and 60s, but Beetles often became the family's first, second car in the driveway. Now in California, people in the 50s started cobbling together makeshift vehicles to play in the desert and the sand dunes. The design of the air-cooled VWs made for a nice platform to build off of. One outfit in the 50s was a VW dealer and speed shop called MP. Uh, they sold a kit designed to work on a VW bug called a Sportster. The bugs were body on frame, meaning you could unbolt the entire body from the frame um, and with their kit you, you put this metal body in place of the stock one. Slap on some bigger tires and you go have fun. Since it was air cooled, there was no radiator to worry about. Um, they were simple beasts and easy to work on. You could pull the motor out and likely even install it faster than, say, a starter motor on some modern cars today. I recall borrowing an engine for a Memorial Day weekend trip once because of engine trouble in one of my dune buggies. I was driving again in about 30 minutes with a loaner engine. But back to Empey. Now someone else back then saw the MP Sportster. His name was Bruce Myers. He had a modified VW bus that he played with in the sand. Uh, he didn't really care for the style of the MP Sportster and thought he could do better. He had experience in making fiberglass boats and surfboards and decided to start his own dune buggy kit company. What he created was the Manx. The early ones he made didn't even use the VW floor. It was all made of fiberglass and you just attached the suspension and drivetrain to it. It was a great idea, but proved to be expensive to sell. So, plan B. Sell a cheaper fiberglass kit where you use the beetle frame. The construction was fairly simple. You took a donor beetle, unbolted the body, and you cut the frame in half. No, I'm not kidding. A Manx wheelbase is 14 and a quarter inches shorter than the bug it's made from. So you cut this section out, and then you weld it back together. Bolt the new fiberglass body on, and presto, dune buggy. The donor car provided the frame, obviously, engine, transmission, suspension, 
fuel tank, steering column, lighting, etc. No two are alike because it's all about what the builder wanted. You don't run stock skinny bug tires. Well, some may on the front, but I had 10 inch rims on the rear of mine. Uh, I had inset taillights on one I own, but others just use stock VW ones. I also opted for a body lift, stereo, electronic ignition, and disc brakes, custom seats, etc. Because that's how I wanted it. Bug engines are simple air-cooled units. Uh, the last one I, I had in my last bug had about 65 horsepower, maybe. But it was a light car. I wanted simplicity, and I appreciated the classic look. There are adapter kits, though, if you want to put in a Subaru or other engines. Uh, they get more complex, and you really got to start worrying about wheelies as it's rear-engined. I drove one years ago with a four-cylinder from a Ford Focus with maybe 120 horsepower, and it was amazing how quick that car was. But let's get back to Mr. Myers for a bit. His creation hit the magazine cover of Hot Rod in 1966, but when he decided to race one in an off-road race in Mexico, it made the cover of Car and Driver in 67. It was a race now known as the Baja 1000, and he won. Uh, the orders for these came pouring in, and they had difficulty meeting the demand. Uh, there was another problem brewing. Other people were basically making counterfeit fiberglass bodies. In Doom Buggy World, they are often referred to as Manx clones. Some were good quality, others were really shoddy with thin fiberglass. There were hundreds of companies making fiberglass bodies, and even Sears sold a kit. You remember Sears? Uh, Mr. Myers had a patent and tried to sue, but the rulings didn't go his way. So they tried to expand the line to stand out more in the crowd. Uh, this one here was called a Toad. It was not designed to be street legal, hence the name. Tow it to the dunes and back from your house. No trailer required. You can flat tow old beetles or dune buggies easily. Uh, he also had a model called the SR. I own one of these briefly myself. It was a street legal on road sports car buggy, had scissor doors and the same shortened floor of a Manx. I bought one of these for 500 bucks, responding to an ad in the paper for a Doom buggy. It was complete but needed some TLC. I went to a Doom buggy forum online as I didn't know what it was. My intentions was to make a Doom buggy out of it and drive it on the beach. A guy messaged me that he would trade his Myers Manx for it, even Steven. And uh, his was pretty much road ready inside and out. And that's how I got my first dune buggy. All it needed was things like turn signals and better seats, so I made out like a bandit. Back to Bruce Myers. With all the competition, legal cases, and tax problems, his company BF Myers folded in the early 70s. Dune buggies left a bad taste in his mouth for years after all that until the mid 90s. Mr. Myers was invited to a dune buggy festival in France and was treated like a rock star. He went home to California, started a dune buggy club, and he started authenticating real Myers Manxes. Uh, I guess he saw there was still a market, so by 2000 he started making Manx bodies again. In 01 he created an all new Manx design. Uh, these did not require shortening the frame, so it had more of a back seat. The Manxster 2 plus 2. And a year later, the Dual Sport. In uh, 2009, we get the Kickout Traditional and SS versions. Uh, it's a modern take of the original Manx. And, and I love a good comeback story. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. We did lose uh, Bruce Myers on February 19th, 2021. He was 94 years old. He had an amazing life and I will forever be grateful for his contribution to the world. In fact, I just read an article recently about an upcoming Manx 2.0. Uh, it's not old Beetle based, it's actually an all new electric car. And uh, you can see it at MyersManx.com if you have an interest in buying a Doom Buggy kit or finding out more about this electric model. It's pretty cool. Um, so was the buzz buggy craze as large in the 21st century? as it was in the 60s and 70s? No. Uh, back then you saw them a lot more. Elvis drove one in a movie, as did Steve McQueen. There were kids shows like Speed Buggy, which was a Scooby-Doo variant with a car talking and acting human instead of a dog. 
uh, and it was voiced by Mel Blanc. Yes, that Mel Blanc. Uh, there were other kids shows too, like Wonderbug in the 70s, and, uh, you know, other TV and film from that era had buggies. ZZ Top fans will notice one from their Legs video. Uh, a little more modern buggy appearance was the Gorillaz video for the song 192000, which is one of my favorite music videos ever. I've personally owned three buggies myself, four if you count the SR that I owned briefly. The Manx I bought, uh, the, the first Manx that I got, I stupidly sold it after a few years because I thought I wanted a street legal sand rail and put one together with the help of a friend. I missed the fiberglass buggy though, so I sold it after a few years and tried to find another Manx. I eventually picked up an unfinished project with a frame already shortened and it came with several boxes of parts. Eight months later I had this one you see here and I enjoyed it for 14 years. I moved from an area where I could drive it on the beach, so even though it was street legal, I decided a modern convertible would better fit my lifestyle now. Buggies are so much fun to drive, and it's amazing the attention you get. Uh, when someone in a car that costs six figures gives you that approval nod at a stoplight, it's a good feeling, especially when you only have about 10-year-old Corolla money invested in it. So do you want one? Let's do a quick pro and con and see. First pro, can be an affordable classic for the car show scene, or any scene. Because of their simplicity, it's possible to pick up a project at a decent price. Floors rusted out? Yeah, they sell them and they're fairly cheap last I checked. The body isn't rusting away, it's fiberglass. No doors, no heater, no windows other than the front glass. No interior carpet needed, I used bed liner spraying in mine. Parts are cheap and available, it's all vintage VW. Start pricing out how much interior parts alone can run you on a vintage Mustang and get back with me. Another pro, you can make it fast or not. A stock 1600 bug motor will allow you to keep up with modern traffic easy enough in city driving. And you can modify a bug motor for even more. Engine adapters allow you to make terrorizing small beasts with motorcycle-like power to weight ratios. Your call, how big's your wallet? You can dump a lot of money into engine upgrades. Another pro? It's fun to drive. The hardest part is getting used to the short wheelbase. Making the steering wheel twitchy at speeds over 30 to 40 miles an hour. But it's a fun open air motoring car. And it does well on the beach too. This is a pro or a con. Uh, you'll have uh, people, they'll want to talk to you about it. Old timers will tell you about one they had or their uncle had or their uncle's roommate's uh, nephew had. Younger people may ask what it is. Little kids may see a real life cartoon car running around. And, and every time you stop somewhere, expect to strike up a conversation. I'm social, so it wasn't a con for me. Uh, another one, that pro or con, it's a stick. All bugs were four speed manuals, not counting the auto stick models they briefly had. The auto sticks were three-speed manuals with automatic clutch. Sounds like fun. It wasn't. Get the four-speed manual. Auto sticks are far more rare, slower, and you might even have, uh, have trouble finding parts for them now. Don't want to learn to drive a stick? A buggy is probably not for you. Total pro to me. I'm a third pedal fan. Another pro. They're easy to tow. All you need is a VW Beetle trailer hitch. Just like this. You can tow it flat with all four wheels of the bug or a buggy on the ground. There's no trailer required. Uh, don't try to go in reverse with these hooked up. Uh, you can bend the trailer hitch. You've been warned. Um, I could hook mine up inside of a minute and be ready to go. Um, the little car just follows where to, whatever you're towing it with with ease. Uh, just don't forget the safety chains. Now a con. It's a 45 year old plus car, depending on what year you originally built it off of. You like to tinker? It's not like your modern car that you just turn the key and go daily. Carbs might need to be adjusted, maybe your exhaust bolts need to be tightened, may leak some oil. Wait, it's an air-cooled VW. It will leak oil. <laughs> the stock brakes with drums? Well, the, you have to adjust those from time to time. They're not uh, 
<laughs> they're not automatic. Inspect the fuel lines often. Check the fuel filters tight. None of this stuff is hard. You just need to be, be ready for it. Um, I did things like electronic ignition and disc brakes to beef up performance and reliability. And I don't like messing with points. Uh, and disc brakes, you know, being self-adjusting. So that's just good stuff for me. Um, and I don't want to imply that age is a con per se. But let's be real, a modern vehicle can do about everything better. But classic cars aren't about that, right? Nope. Um, another con. There's no roof. Yeah, you can buy a soft top kit. And they even made some fiberglass tops too if you can find it. Or, or make one your own on yourself. But it is, a, it, at heart, it's an open car. Uh, I had drain holes in mine and a marine grade stereo and speakers. Expecting anything and everything to potentially get wet. Uh, goes without saying that if air conditioning and heat is a priority, it's probably not the vehicle for you. Another con. Lack of safety. My two fiberglass buggies weighed about 1,300 pounds each. There's no crumple zones. The fuel tank is literally under the hood in front of you. You're sitting on a metal frame with a fiberglass body around you. A roll cage may help some, but physics be physics. My Miata has over a thousand pounds on a Manx. My Miata is about a thousand pounds lighter than a lot of sedans. You see where I'm going with this? Another con. It's not a highway cruiser. These things don't tend to be happy cruising over 50, 55 miles an hour. The aerodynamics are worse than the bug you made it from. That and the short wheelbase doesn't make for a smooth ride. It's something you take out, put around the local car show, or hit the beach, dunes, uh, not drive for hours on the highway to get somewhere. I mean, you can, but my back would start talking to me. And also, in my area, if you're not doing 80 on the highway, you're going to get run over. Anyway, weigh the pros and cons yourself and see if uh, dune buggy ownership might be uh, something in your future. But that's my dune buggy tale. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share your buggy experiences in the comments. I'd love to see them. Until next time, chatter out.